Hello there once again. Got a more unusual set today from 1987 which has come in for service and they want a mic putting to it. And this is one of the first PR27GB offerings at the time. This is from June 1987 and this is the first of the 40 channel Euro ones when the UK were first allowed to use the European channels. At that time you had to have a radio for 2781 format a separate radio for PR27GB, conversions are not permitted. And then in 94, um, they finally moved on to being able to combine the two equipments into uh, one radio, and that's when the 80 channel set started to come out. So this is the first of these uh, PR27GB sets. It's the DNT Contact 40. And there we have the back, and uh, it's just got an extension speaker socket, which we'll plug our apparatus into the aerial socket I've taken the screws out to save time so it's just on off volume and squelch on unusual slider controls I think that says channel 9 on and off but the uh, legends worn off power on and off up down and incredibly they work now one of the things the customer wants with this oh green display too is that he wanted a mic putting to it. Well, looking at the circuit diagram which we have for the radio, there, we haven't got a full service manual, just the circuit and the layout and the block diagram. And I've made up this chart so I know where the adjustments are, hopefully, because I don't remember ever having done one of these before. Now, Looking at the circuit and looking at these skip tech mics, which is an 8 pin DIN, unusually, it looks to me like a similar or the correct mic. So we'll find out. Because even this was quite hard to come by. And the supplier told me this was the last one they had. So our customer will be lucky. So we'll plug that in. Well, at least it fits. That's a good start. And it does go into the... Uh, the radio actually goes into transmit, though it isn't transmitting. Is it receiving? <laughs> well, my goodness, it certainly is. Oh, they are fiddly, aren't they, these slider controls? Right, we'll take the bottom off. I've already unsoldered the speaker. Well, I only had to unsolder one wire because the other one fell off. Inside, the printer circuit board says on it DNT CT03, no CT01. Get the light there, CT01, there we go. Now, as I say, this doesn't appear to be transmitting. So we'll see whether we can find out why that is. So I'd better pause the video and do a quick fault find. Right, resuming the video, that uh, soon sorted that problem out. What had happened is that the antenna socket had become loose, and in turning it around and putting the PL259 aero plug in the back, over a period of time, what's happened is, if we just zoom in on that, the wire to the transmitter, the capacitor there, had come away from the center because of the strain, uh, because that was the only thing holding it together. So that's now absolutely beautifully transmitting. One of the dead giveaways is I was looking at the ammeter on the power supply, and it was drawing the kind of current, 820 milliamps, that I would expect for a perfectly working transmitter to work. Now, at the moment, we've got uh, the set on, it's on channel 20, but we've not got any volume on it, and uh, it's drawing 170 milliamps from the uh, workshop power supply. Now, if this radio wasn't transmitting, and I went in to transmit, it would probably still be drawing about 170 milliamps if there was a fault on the drivers or the pre-driver or whatever. The fact it was drawing 870 milliamps would tell me it was transmitting the power wasn't going somewhere, and so a quick uh, check, and 
that was it. It was the dry joint because of the aerial socket being loose. So we turned up the aerial socket, and that'll be the fault on the set. Now the customer wants to set um, servicing, of course, and we'll we'll now proceed with that. Um, so the microphone which we've bought in for this is correct by the looks of things. I can never find a tool. There we go. Right here we go. So the tra the first transmit. Uh, coil on these is trans is transformer 10 which is that one down there so the transmit lineup is transformer 10 11 12 13 14 and I've taken the shield plate off there just so I could get to the soldering of the back of there this shield plate has a hole through so that we can adjust T15 which is just under there so I'm just going to go through these what I'll just do is switch the um, other camera on so we can see the power meter. And my shoulder. Okay, so we're going to transmit. In fact, I'll try it on that range. No, we're already nearly at the, at the end there. So the first coil is transformer t uh, 10, so we'll just go for that. I think we can turn the RF down on these. I think it's that one. Yes, that's right. That's going to give me better accuracy. So I've turned the power down using the RV4 preset. I'll go through that with you again. So I'm on that first one, which is T10. We're going to move to T11. Next one up. Looking at the power meter, that's fine. T12, fine, T13, that's fine, I'll go back to the 30 watt range on the meter now, we'll turn the power up to full, which is there, just over the 4 watts, and moving to T14, which is that one there, bit to be gained there. And finally T15 which is the one under the shield. So the shield's off right this second. There we go, it's just about four and a half watts. Then I'll just turn it down to four watts using the RV4 preset. RV4 preset. But I'll use a yellow tool so you can see it better. Which is that one there. So that's turning that down to four. That's a bit finicky. There we go. And then there's an RF bar graph meter here. You can see that is now lit all four. I'll just pop the other camera off. And the TX power meter is the next preset there. So that was the power output. That is the um, transmit um, power meter, RF meter. So I want that to just read, just read the four. There we go. I've got to knock the channel because it's one of these up-down controls. Put it back to 20. Now the only thing which we need to do on the transmit side of things is to set the deviation. And the deviation on this is the preset just the... Uh, Oops, the preset just there, and that's RV3. So we'll get the oscillator out, go into the deviation. I'll just have to tune that because we're normally on 2781. There we go. Pause the video because we look like we've got a bit of a snag here as well.
restarting the video. We've sorted the deviation problem out. <clears throat> the new microphone, unfortunately, had a fault on it. But it's, in real life, you can't be just sending things back saying, oh, that doesn't work. You've just got to get out and sort it out. Uh, it's an electric condenser mic with these up-down buttons. And there's a small printed circuit board inside. And there was just a whisker... Uh, of print where there shouldn't be, which was shunting the audio to earth. So I've sorted that out in two minutes flat. So now we've got proper deviation. So I will now switch the other camera back on. And there's the deviation showing two and a half. There we go. So that sorted that out. The only thing left to do is to set the frequency. So we'll do that right now. This radio is so light it's wandering off all over the bench. Right, 27205 it should be. It's virtually spot on, it's 270494. So I'll just adjust that and it is TC, get back to my notes, TC1. And TC1 is just there by the reference off to laser crystal. Just zoom in on that for you. Just get the light so you can just see that little red preset capacitor down there. And we'll just now adjust that for correct frequency. And there we have it. So we've now finished the transmitter. It's doing full 4 watts. 27205, as I said, it's a, on the CPT band. And the next video will move on to the receiver.